Hey everybody, Axel Wilkinson here for HitFilm.com and this is a mini tutorial I put together to explain the different types of motion that you can track in Mocha HitFilm. In order to properly specify what types of motion should be tracked, we need to understand what each of these options mean. The first three options, translation, scale, and rotation, can describe movement in two-dimensional space. And most of us probably understand them clearly but we will review them briefly, then focus more on shear and perspective, which are the options that cause the most confusion. Okay, so here we are in HitFilm, and here's our frame, and this plane is going to represent the plane we would be tracking in Mocha. So translation refers to any time the plane's position in the frame changes. In 2D, this is essentially the same as adjusting the position of the plane. Scale is an apparent change in the size of the plane and rotation refers to the plane turning. Okay, so we can demonstrate all three of those with this 2D plane, but if we convert the plane to 3D so that now we have to add a camera to the scene, we can get the same results by moving the camera. So let's select the camera layer and now when the camera moves laterally, meaning either side to side or up and down, the translation of that plane changes. Its position in the frame changes even though the plane itself is not moving. When the camera moves forward or backward, the scale of that plane is changed as it fills more or less of the frame. You could also change this by adjusting the zoom level of the lens. And if we roll the camera, let's use the Z orientation there, now we get a change in the rotation of that plane. Again, even though the plane itself is not moving. Okay, so we can easily demonstrate all of these movements directly in HitFilm, but of course the same type of movement will be seen in your live action footage. Okay, so we should all be up to speed on those three options. Now let's focus more on shear and perspective. These options apply specifically to 3D planes that are not fully facing the camera. Anytime you have an oblique plane, which is a plane that is neither parallel nor perpendicular to your lens, any movement in that plane will cause either shear or perspective shift. Perspective refers to any time the angle of the camera relative to the planar surface changes. So if the plane were to rotate on the y-axis, like that, or if it rotated on the x-axis, like that, we get a change in the angle of the planar surface relative to the camera and that is perspective change. Similarly the camera could orbit the plane so if I grab the orbit tool and I change the camera's position relative to that plane we also get perspective shift as the camera moves. Shear is distortion that occurs coplanar to the surface itself so the angle of the surface relative to the camera isn't necessarily changing but the apparent shape of the surface is changing. This can be caused by the actual surface being stretched. If you're tracking a cloth surface, for example, it can easily be stretched in a variety of directions. But shear can also be caused by a specific type of movement of the camera. Let's look at a couple common examples. If you are tracking someone's torso, shear is quite common. You could have a person walking straight towards you, and there won't necessarily be any change in perspective, but you will see this sort of shear distortion. And here is a shot to demonstrate this. Notice the distortion of the grid here where I have tracked using shear with perspective turned off. So all of that distortion is just being caused by shear of the planar surface. Another common situation that demonstrates shear is the corner of a building. It might be hard to visualize out of context when you would see this sort of distortion, but if we stick two planes together, now it makes more sense, right? If you picture this as the corner of a building with the camera height changing through the shot, because the camera is moving in a direction that is relatively coplanar with the surface, we see shear distortion on that surface. So hopefully this video demystifies these options for some of you so that you can understand them better, because specifying the exact types of motion present in your shot will ensure that you get the most accurate results from Mocha so that you can get rock solid tracking info to work with back in HitFilm. Thanks very much for watching this tutorial and goodbye.